House of the Dragon has already had some majorly f***ed up things happen in it. There's been deaths whilst giving birth, women asking dragons to kill them, kids with file teeth in fighting pits, and so much more. However, there's an even worse moment coming down the line that I thought we'd talk about in this video. Now either you've read the book and already knew what it would be from the thumbnail, or you haven't and are just curious by the tease with Helena. Either way, I will be spoiling one of the upcoming chapters in the book, so if you don't want to know, then I'll recommend you head off like Vaymond. Please hit the thumbs up button if you enjoy the video, you sick f**k. And make sure you subscribe for more House of the Dragon breakdowns. With that out of the way, huge thank you for clicking this, now let's get into the video. Okay, so in order to set the situation up, we have to talk about one of the major deaths that happens early on in the Dance of the Dragons. Lucerus and Aemond are both dispatched to Storm's End in order to try and get people on their side. The Baratheons are a major house and having them on board would have the potential to swing the civil war in their favour. Aemond arrived there first and he agreed to marry one of Lord Boris's daughters in order to strengthen both sides. Lucerus showed up not long after, but as he was already betrothed to his cousin, he couldn't do the same thing. Aemon demanded that he cut out his eye, and though Luke didn't do this, Aemon eventually did get his revenge. He followed Lucerus out, and on the back of Vagar, he killed him with his dragon. Upon learning this, Daemon promised Rhaenyra that there would be a son for a son, and this is where things really start to go down. Daemon went to Mysoria, who, as we've seen, has now amassed a foothold in the underworld of King's Landing. She runs almost all aspects of it, outside of the seedier elements like the fighting pits we saw in episode 9. Damon asks for her to become his instrument in order to inflict pain on the high towers, and she hires two assassins in blood and cheese. According to the books, one was a sergeant in the city watch that had his gold cloak removed for beating a prostitute to death. The other was a rat catcher who had worked in the Red Keep. Known as Cheese for using, well, well Cheese, he had mastered all the ins and outs of the keep whilst hunting after the vermin. This meant that he had experienced knowledge of all the back passages, hidden doorways, and the secret tunnels that could lead one to anywhere in the castle. Devised by Meg or the Cruel, these could often be found when candles were seen flickering due to a draft coming from under a doorway. The book tells us they used a once forgotten passageway, and through this they went into the heart of the keep. They hadn't been told who to kill, only that there should be a son for a son. After the death of Viserys, Queen Alison had moved to residency in the Tower of the Hand, and this is where they headed to. They crept through the passageways and popped up in Alicent's room, which is where they gagged the queen and strangled her bedmaid. Here they waited, fully aware that Helena used to bring the children in to see the queen every night before they were put to bed. In the darkness, they leapt out and killed her guards before Cheese grabbed Maelor. With a knife pointed to his neck, he started to lay out the terms after introducing himself as a debt collector. In our breakdowns, we've often talked about how there was very much an eye for an eye mentality that was started all the way back in Aemon's childhood. After he lost his, Alison demanded that Lucerus hand over one too, and this would be carried into the character's death several years later. Cheese actually said the line, an eye for an eye, a son for a son. We only want the one to square things. Won't hurt the rest of you fine folks, not one little heir. Which one you want to lose, your grace? Horror then crept over Helena's face as she realised what he meant. As most parents would, she offered her life in the place of her children's, but blood chillingly added, A wife's not a son, it has to be a boy. From this point, Helena was in an impossible situation. She had no chance of escape, and would have to choose one of her children to die. If you've ever seen the film Sophie's Choice, then you'll likely be aware of the similar situation that's presented in that. It's a terrifying prospect for any parent, with it meaning life for one child, but the guilt and grief of knowing that another died. Helena pleaded while she was on her knees for them to stop, but Cheese said that if she didn't choose soon, that blood would assault their little girl Jahera. With time running short, Helena made a choice, and she picked her youngest son Maelor. In her mind, he was too young to understand what was going on, and in her heart, she also carried the idea of succession. The older son Jaehaerys was Aegon's firstborn, and therefore he was next in line for the throne. Cheese whispered in Maelor's ear, You hear that little boy? Your mama wants you dead. According to the source material, Cheese then grinned at Blood, who instantly turned and cut off Jaehaerys' head instead in one fell swoop. It had all been a ruse to see which child she cared about the most. Jaehaerys was killed then and there, and Maelor would spend the rest of his life knowing that his mother chose him to die over his brother. Blood and Cheese actually kept their word, and they didn't harm Alicent, Helena, or any of the children. 
Instead, they snuck off through the passages and fled into the night carrying Jaehaerys' head with them. This night of terror would completely change Helena for the rest of her life, and she would end up eventually going insane. The book says that she wouldn't eat, bathe, leave her chambers, and she couldn't look at her surviving son Maelor. She knew that she'd chosen him to die, and couldn't bring herself to face up to what she'd done. Eventually this got so bad that Aegon had the child taken away from her, and he was given over to Alicent so that she could raise him as her own. It completely rocked the royals, and was really when Rhaenyra's side showed they weren't messing around, and would stoop to levels of depravity in order to win this war. Helena was completely knocked out of the fight, and because of this, the Greens lost a dragon on their side. Now due to the level of the crime, Otto immediately had a search party sent out for the two assassins. Blood was seized trying to flee King's Landing with Jaehaerys' head, and under torture he confessed he was taking it to Daemon and Harrenhal. Whilst he was being cut apart, he told them who'd given him the job, a woman named Misery. Blood was tortured for 13 days before he was eventually allowed to die, and Alison went to Laris and asked that he find out his real name. This is so that she could have his entire family murdered, but whether this actually happened or not is something the book doesn't tell us. The King's God searched through the streets of King's Landing looking for both Cheese and Mazaria, but neither could be found. King Aegon demanded that all the rat catchers in the city were to be hanged, and after this was carried out, a hundred cats were brought in to try and hunt the rats instead. It's safe to say the family were never the same again, and it acts as the last handful of paragraphs in the Sun for a Sun chapter, closing out what's a devastatingly brutal one. I think at this point the Greens start to realise the kind of war they'd brought on themselves by robbing Rhaenyra of her crown and son. Up until this point they'd pretty much been winning due to supplanting Aegon and taking out Lucerys. However, this showed with an eye for an eye mentality that we both lose our sight, and it was all started by Aemon's need for revenge. This was of course put in him by his mother, who tried to strike out one of Lucerys' eyes when they were younger. Though she walked away from this moment without getting into any trouble, would have major ramifications that wouldn't be felt for decades. Aemon would kill Lucerys, and eventually this would lead to the death of Jaehaerys. It started a war of escalation in which both sides tried to constantly outdo the other because they were worried about how bad things might get. This story is a perfect summation of why the Dance of the Dragons was so costly, and how it could have all been avoided without the poisoning and plotting that came from the parents. I think when it finally makes it to the show that this scene will be unforgettable, and something that sticks with those who watch it for a long, long time. Now there are many, many events in the Dance of the Dragons that are completely f***ed up, and if you know another one, then make sure you comment below and let me know. And happier news, we are in competition right now and giving away three copies of Top Gun Maverick on the 15th of November. All you have to do to be one of the chances of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the video. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month, and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, make sure you check out our breakdown of why Aemon is so important. That'll be linked on screen right now, and in it we talk about the character's origin story, what goes on to happen with him, and lots of other things. Definitely worth checking out, so make sure you head over there right after this. By the way, thanks for sticking through the video, I've been Paul, I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.